What is up guys, this is JPR Tech here and today we're taking a look at a hacking touch project that I've been working on for quite a while. In this video I will take a look at a good HTPC or a small Mac mini alternative that can run Mac OS X almost 100% natively. We're talking about the Acer Aspire X5810 which is a small PC that takes up a small footprint but packs a lot of punch. So let's take a look at the package. Now right off the bat with its brushed metal chassis and the gunmetal gray front panel, this is not your typical case for a budget PC. Now the Aspire X5810 comes in several versions. This one is packing a core 2 quad 8200 CPU running at 2.33 gigahertz. Now despite its weak speed, it is a 4 core CPU so it does have 2 extra cores to help with heavy apps such as iMovie and Photos. This model includes 3 gigs of DDR3 RAM which is very limiting to the performance but removing the side panel we get an extra slot to increase your RAM or to replace it all together with better RAM. You do have to remove the DVD drive that it came with to access the two SATA ports and the GPU plus that extra RAM slot. And yes, this system did have a little NVIDIA GT120 with 1 gigs of video RAM, which it ain't much, but it is a lot better than the internal GPU chip. Fortunately, the GPU can be upgraded as well, but you have to be mindful of the limited PSU. The power supply doesn't have power that goes to a GPU, so you have to solely rely on the motherboard to power up the GPU. So something like a GTX 750 or a Radeon HD 6450 would be great in this low profile, low budget PC. So with its external slick design and access to internal components that could be upgraded for cheap, this could be a great Mac mini alternative. Now I got mine from the office since the Windows Vista choked and the PC just broke, I got it to play with and I was able to resurrect it with Clover and El Capitan. So a lot of things run really natively. So speaking of which, first things first, how does it run? It runs great. The install process is easy with the proper Clover legacy settings and the GT120, it runs natively. And what works? Well, amazingly, sleep and wake works. Even with a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, you could still wake up the PC. iCloud, the App Store, FaceTime, my messages are all working as well. OpenCL and FX are running smoothly. All fours are running effectively. And the external USB ports and the internal SD card reader is also working. Internet port also work after installing the proper text. Now things that are not working, or I should say the only thing that didn't work natively was the audio. And this is very common for most hacking touches, but with an external USB audio interface, it's an easy and cheap fix. I'm actually using a pair of Bluetooth headphones and speakers to connect to the Bluetooth USB dongle that I have plugged in the back. Now while I'm at it, I also connected my Logic Core, which in other parts of the world is known as the Logitech, the K811 illuminated Bluetooth keyboard, which I actually reviewed in my channel a while back. I also have a run of the mill Bluetooth mouse connected. Well, let's talk about performance. We're not gonna test the GPU since frankly, it's not even worth it. But in the Geekbench 4, the X5810, and remember this is the quad core from 2008, the Q8200, and Windows 10 is scored 1,497 with a single score. With the multi-core, it was a 4,082. Our hacking touch, running the latest El Capitan version 10.11.6, had a single score of 1,657 with the multi-score being 4,734, which is actually quite an improvement over Windows. Now we're gonna compare that to our MacBook Air, that is a 2013 with the Haswell Core i5-42 running macOS Sierra. I got a single score of 2,991 with the multi-core 5,409. Now compare that to the Office Mac Mini, which is a 2012 Ivy Bridge, the Core i5 version, with 8 gigs of RAM, in Windows 8.1 it scored a single score of 2,984. Multi-score was 5,772. Now in macOS Sierra, it actually again passed the Windows version. For example, the single score was 3,041 and a multi-score of 5,880. 
So we can see a trend here that OS X really handles efficiently whatever har hardware is thrown to the OS. And that's the same case with this Acer Expire X5810. We have seen improvement by running OS X over Windows version. So the moral of this story is if you have an old PC that you don't use much or a PC that needs a modern OS but don't want to shell out money for it, why not try sticking OS X in it? It will add new life to your old hardware. If not, there's always Linux, which recently I took a look at Linux Mint, the KDE, and it's really the most elegant and pleasing to the eyes Linux distribution that I have tried in a while. But of course, if you're gonna go try OS X, do so at your own discretion. This project of mine is purely experimental and only doing so to resurrect an old PC and to test for broken components that kept causing Windows and Linux to keep freezing. Ironically, OS X doesn't freeze at all, not even once, and that's just mind boggling. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this overview of the OS X running an old hardware. If you want a tutorial on how to install it, go ahead and hit that like button and I will be preparing a tutorial how to do step by step to get OS X in supported PC hardware. And subscribe to get the notifications for future reviews and tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.